Growing up, I always wanted a nickname. I dreamed of having an exciting nickname like Buffalo Bill or Long John Silver. And uh, I tried to start several on my own, but they never caught on. I had a brother and a sister. Marty was my sister. She was two years younger than me, and Terry was two years younger than her. So we grew up fishing and hunting and having lots of fun. We also grew up singing a lot together, and our family would gather around. My dad played an old guitar, and he'd get it out at bedtime. We'd all gather around and sing, Mansion Over the Hilltop, I'll Fly Away, those old-time Southern songs. When it came time to go to college, I went to Bob Jones. I auditioned for Dr. Garlock's choir and got in his choir. And the first Sunday that we were on Vespers, Shelley noticed me and asked her dad, who's that blonde boy in your choir? And got to grad school, graduated. Shelley and I got married, and then I started teaching. And then after about a year of teaching, I started having problems reading. I noticed the vision in this eye was getting a little blurry. Went to the eye doctor just to get a pair of glasses, I thought. I looked into my left eye and saw something that kind of bothered him. And so he sent me to Emory University Hospital in Atlanta, Georgia. Over the next few months, I went back and forth and back and forth. And every time I went back to the hospital, the test got a little more serious. Finally, the last test, the doctor said, would need to be conducted in surgery. And he said, if what was in my left eye was cancer, he said, when I woke up, my left eye would be gone. <laughs> a little bit suspenseful that day. And uh, anyway, so when I came to, uh, Shelley told me, it was cancer and your left eye is gone. The following day, uh, the doctor brought Shelley in and said, you're gonna need to dress this and change the bandage and everything. So. He took the bandage off and started to dress it and show her how to do it, and she proceeded to faint. <laughs> the nurse caught her, and uh, I said, don't worry about her, I can do this, let me do it. The other thing I did is when I got home, I had an old pair of black boots, and I cut out a patch and made a patch, a lot like this one. Went to church the following Sunday, and a little buddy of mine came running up and said, what's that on your left eye? I said, well, it's a pirate patch. He looked at me and said, are you a pirate? And I said, I guess I am now. You can call me Patch the Pirate. So he ran back and told all of his little friends. Moments later, just before the service, a whole troop of them came running down to the front shouting, Ahoy, Patch the Pirate! First time I ever heard that, and heard it millions of times since, but that was the first time. And we began to travel. Dr. Garlock, my wife's dad, asked me to start traveling with him in meetings. And so we started traveling. I'd speak to the high school, he'd speak to the adults, he'd work with the adult choir, I'd work with the high school choir, and then um, we'd have a concert on, on Friday nights. I also spoke in the elementary chapel, but we didn't have any music for elementary kids, and so we had a concert where the adults sang, the high schoolers sang, and uh, the kids said, well, we want to sing too. And I said, well, we don't have any music for it. And they said, well, write some, you're Patch the Pirate. <laughs> And so my first two songs were Jonah and David, come and listen to my fearful tale. That was my first song for kids. We began to sing it every week, and then the kids uh, said, well, you've made recordings for everybody else, can't you make one for us? And I said, well, maybe. So we quickly wrote 16 songs, and then at the last minute I decided we could weave them together with some characters. I'd be Patch. We did it early in the morning, so I was Wally Whale. Shelly had laryngitis the day we did it, so we made her a seagull. Then I had three friends, we smurfed their voices, made them into oysters. And that was our first Patch the Pirate recording. It was a record. I don't know if you've ever seen a record, but it's a big black flat thing with a hole in the middle. It had been out about three or four months, and the kids said, we need another one. The parents said, we've got to have another one. We're sick and tired of this one. So for the last 38 years, we've done one a year, and something that looked like it was Looked like it was a trial. God changed into one of the greatest blessings of our lives. God has been so good. When I got out of the hospital, I knew God was good. And I wanted to write a song to express how good God is. And so I sat down with my Bible, opened to the book of Philippians, where I kind of camped out in the hospital, began to weave together a song, and we call it Rejoice in the Lord. God never moves without purpose or plan 
When trying his servant and molding a man, give thanks to the Lord, though your testing seems long, and darkness he giveth a song. He giveth a oh, rejoice in the Lord, he makes no mistake. He knoweth the end of each path that I take. For when I am tried and purified, I shall come forth as gold. Oh, not see through the shadows ahead, so I looked at the cross of my Savior and said, I bow to the will of the Master that day. Then peace came and tears fled away. Now I can see, testing comes from above. God strengthens his children and purges in love. My Father knows best, and I trust in his care. in the Lord, he makes no mistake, he knows with the end of each path that I take.